Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our series on urban energy modeling with Dragonfly. And in this this video is going to be kind of the the, the keystone in the arch of this the workflow that we've been working towards over the last several videos. So we just uh, spent a long time building this this urban uh, model with Dragonfly, uh, assigning all the properties to it that we wanted for an energy simulation. And in the last video, we finally ran this urban model through uh, through UrbanOpt, uh, and we're getting out a, a list of results here, these SQL files uh, that we're going to now parse and visualize to understand what exactly happened uh, within our urban energy simulation. Uh, so. First things first, I mean, just to review, most of the outputs that I requested back here were just related to the energy use. I wasn't really exploring a lot of the other uh, things that you can do with, with Ladybug tools, but certainly any type of analysis that you could run with uh, with Honeybee, you know, whether that's a thermal comfort analysis or uh, a peak load study, uh, all those can be done uh, with, with uh, Dragonfly models and, and the simulation results you here, see here just as easily as they could be done with uh, in, in Honeybee. Uh, so, uh, in any case, yeah, so the key things I'm going to look at, though, are the energy use. So the energy use intensity is my first objective to get out of this simulation. So in order to do this, I'm going to use the our Honeybee result parsing components. Uh, and I'm going to bring, let's see, onto the canvas here, this uh, HB end use intensity component. All right, so we know we've used this component with Honeybee in the past in previous video series uh, in order to understand what the energy use intensity is for our model, all right, because EY tends to be a very useful metric for uh, evaluating how good of a design we have, at least in terms of its energy efficiency, because it's always going to be normalized by floor area. So, all right, so first things first of what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect up the SQL files that I have from the urban op simulation to this component. And you remember in Honeybee, right, we connected up just a single SQL file to get an EUI. Uh, and one thing you probably didn't realize at the time is that this component works just the exact same way with lists of SQL files as it does with singular SQL files. So actually, the value that you see here, uh, right, because I haven't set IP to true, this is the value in SI. So the energy use intensity of this entire district that I've modeled, modeled here is 257 uh, 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 kilowatt hours per square meter. Uh, right, so isn't it nice that we can actually boil down this huge, <laughs> huge model of many, many zones uh, to just a single number, uh, and we can use this number to evaluate the impact of strategies. Let's say, you know, if we were to swap out a certain HVAC system in some of these buildings, we can actually get a sense of what impact that has over the entire district by using this EUI number. Uh, but of course, the next question after we see the EUI is, well, what what is that EUI really made out of? Uh, and of course, we can find that out the same way we would with a uh, Honeybee model, which is that I'm going to connect up the EUI end use here, right? And this is going to give me a list of numbers that together sum to this 257. Uh, and I'm going to copy and paste this panel, and I'm going to connect up the actual end uses output here so we can see what each one of these numbers actually corresponds to. Okay. All right. So again, this is right. This is the end uses. This is the end use UI. Okay. And so we see most of the energy consumed in the district is either, well, it's either heating or interior equipment, uh, which probably makes sense. Uh, you know, as I said, we're in a cool climate in climate zone uh, five, Ashford climate zone five in, here in Buffalo, New York. Uh, so, right, so I, that, I, that's exactly what I was expecting is maybe to have a higher number of, of, of heating here. Uh, interior equipment, I imagine a lot of that can be chalked up to some of the programs that we looked at all the way in the very beginning of this file, right? I mean, we're simulating, for one thing, we're simulating a hospital setting, an outpatient setting, and there's a lot of fancy equipment that goes into those. Uh, certainly also, I'm sure offices have all sorts of IT equipment and everything. Oh, and restaurants, right? We got all the, uh, uh, the gas stoves and everything, right? So that probably explains why we have such a high amount of heating uh, equipment here. But again, we can see some of these other factors are important too. I mean, uh, lighting is a significant one. Maybe this, this district could really benefit from uh, some, some LEDs or something that could reduce that. Um, and we have the cooling here. And, and uh, cooling and heat rejection probably maybe should uh, should be taken together, although heat rejection is pretty small. In any event, right, so this gives you a, a kind of snapshot of the whole energy use of the district, uh, which is great, uh, you know, uh, for us understanding this. But it really, I mean, what I'd really like to understand is maybe when some of these things are happening, right, rather than just getting a, uh, 
you know, a list of, of energy use intensities, I'd really like to make a visual maybe of the different uh, monthly uh, energy uses uh, that we have uh, uh, coming out of uh, this simulation. So I'm going to group this together and move this off to the side here. And we're going to go down another route, another way to parse the results in here. Uh, so again, these SQL files, they're just like, you know, what you do with Honeybee. Uh, so I'm going to uh, use probably the same workflow that I would if I were parsing the results out of a Honeybee model. I'm going to grab this HP read room energy result. Uh, which, you know, those of you uh, who've worked a lot with Honeybee know that this lists a lot of the most important energy uses uh, that we are interested in here. So I'll be able to get actually a more detailed snapshot of cooling, heating, lighting, uh, etc. So let me go and I'm going to plug in the SQL file to this component. Uh, and I imagine because we've got a big list of SQLs, this component is going to take a little longer to run than usual. Uh, probably at least give it a few seconds, if not a, a minute or so. Uh, but again, oh, that actually wasn't too bad. Again, that probably is partly to, because a lot of the data, if you remember, we requested all of our outputs to be on a monthly basis, right, instead of the default, which is hourly. So that really cuts down on the amount of data that we're, that we're going to have to process here. And that's why this component was able to run in a, in a matter of seconds rather than a minute. Um, but all right, let me see what we actually have coming out of here now. So if I connect up the cooling to this panel, you guys will see. So actually, instead of getting a, you know, a single list of data collections for, you know, the cooling, uh, let's say every room. In, in this case, we're getting cooling values for each and every building. And we're getting a separate branch of, the, of a data tree for each uh, building in the model. And clearly, some of these buildings only have a single cooling piece of equipment. This is probably a chiller for a VAV building. And then some of these have like a list of different cooling values. So I'd imagine this, if you remember the two HVAC systems we use, right? We have uh, some of the residential buildings are using packaged terminal air conditioners, which you're only ever going to have one of those per room or one, one per zone. Uh, so, right, so that's probably what we are seeing here, right? So we're getting data collections for all of these values coming through here. Um, I mean, I could, if I, if I wanted to, maybe... We can see what happens. I'm going to grab one of our ladybug visualization components, like the, the monthly chart right here. Uh, and we can see actually what the cooling uh, is going to look like. Um, I'm kind of thinking before I go and connect stuff to this, though, I should make sure, because I'm going to get several monthly charts if I connect up a data tree like this. So I'm going to right click and flatten the input here so that I'm only going to have one list of cooling values. Uh, and certainly, let's see, all right, I can connect this up to data here and see what I have in the Rhino scene. Uh, you can see it's off to the side here. Uh, probably it's looking, yeah, not quite as informative as I would have hoped, right? We've got a lot of little bars. Some of these look like these are the energy uses for the chillers. Uh, you know, and wow, and that's a, quite a big legend. So, right, so we've got cooling coil electricity that's probably coming for the PTAC system. The chiller, those are coming for the VAV systems. Uh, I think we'd much rather prefer, rather than having this broken down uh, piece by piece, uh, let's see if we can just sum all of these data collections together into a single list of monthly cooling values, right? I think that's going to give us a much uh, better visualization than trying to work with what we have here. So in order to do that, we have, uh, you know, those of you who have, who have uh, seen some of our video tutorials, tutorials coming, covering this, we have several components that allow you to process data collections and do various types of math with data collections. Uh, the one that's going to be probably really useful in this case is LB mass arithmetic operation. If I drop this onto the canvas, you'll see that this allows us to take a list of data collections and do things like summing them all together. We're multiplying them together. Again, we have a few different options for uh, what the operator could be here. The default, though, is just to sum them, which I think is what we want to do most of the time. So if I go and I connect uh, my all of my data, <laughs> my many, many different uh, pieces of HVAC equipment to this component, and you'll see it'll take a second to run, but out of this process, I'm going to get a nice single uh, monthly uh, collection coming out of this, which is a lot uh, easier to work with uh, instead of having... Uh, yeah, instead of having to deal with each one of those individual pieces of HVAC things. Certainly, I could dive into them if I want to, but uh, I think I'm just now going to plug this into the monthly chart component, and I think this is going to be a little nicer. Yeah, look at this. So this is much probably what we'd expect for cooling uh, energy, right? We're seeing that uh, it's not too much. Maybe we have a, a smidge in January and February, uh, but really most of our cooling is coming in, in the summer as we'd expect it, mostly in July it looks like in this climate. 
Uh, and we have uh, kilowatt hours here. That makes sense. That, that's what I'd expect. Uh, all right. The only thing is that we just see in the legend here, it just says energy. Uh, and I'd really prefer if that said something more specific, like cooling. So the way that we can do this is just by plugging in an input for type here. I'm just going to double click on the canvas uh, and uh, bring up a panel with a double quotation and type cooling. All right. And that will allow me to actually specify this type so that we get a more informative, uh, there we go, more informative legend there. So, all right. So I'm actually just going to do this. We have a few different types of end uses coming out of here. We've got, you know, certainly cooling. We've got heating. Uh, we've got lighting. Uh, wow, it's a lot of lighting. <laughs> One value for each room. Uh, we've got electric equipment. Uh, we've got, do we have some, I think we have some, yeah, we have some gas equipment right from those stoves in the restaurant probably. Uh, coming through here. Uh, we don't have any process loads, but we do have hot water. So hot water is something you want to do. And we've got fans and pumps. And I think that's it. Everything else is just a gain that should be empty right now, a gain or a loss. So all right. So I'm just going to fast forward through this next part. Really all that I'm going to be doing is just uh, copy pasting these components, uh, changing the type so that we can get a you know a summed list for each one of these various end uses, uh, and I'll be connecting them at the end up to the monthly chart. So I'm going to fast forward through this right now. You you know you'll see it's it's pretty straightforward what I'm doing. It's very repetitive, so I don't want to waste too much time in the video on it. Uh, but yeah, but feel free to pause if you want to follow along. So here we go. Okay, everyone. So uh, hopefully, if you know, those of you who want to follow along with that, this part, uh, it was easy enough. Again, this is a kind of repetitive process. So if you guys want to, I've given you the final uh, example file that that uh, with the, this output displayed. Uh, if you guys want to uh, just just j jump forward through that, I probably should have said that before I fast forwarded. But in any event, right, all that I've done, I've just summed all these values together and I've plugged them into the monthly chart. So now, at least, if we go over to Grasshop, sorry, the, the Rhino scene here, right? We're able to compare each of these end uses to another, to one another. But probably it would be a little easier if instead of uh, just putting them next to each other, if I just stacked them. So I'm gonna, in order to stack the, the create a stacked bar chart like this, I'm just going to double click the canvas and bring up a boolean toggle. We'll double click to set that to true, and then connect that to stack. Okay. And this is a little bit of a clear uh, visualization here. So, okay, right? So you could actually get a good sense. Heating is really a big, big portion here, right? This is what this light blue uh, one is here. Uh, but uh, but again, the equipment, I guess the equipment is this light yellow here, right? So, all right, this helps us uh, more easily put things into perspective and understand what is going on uh, at different times of the simulation. Uh, maybe one thing I'd like to do, I mean, we're looking at kilowatt hours here. Um, and, you know, it's a little tough, to, uh, especially when I'm looking at numbers that are like at least millions in the millions, I think, right? This is, uh, is this 12 million <laughs> kilowatt hours? It's a little tough for me to get a sense of that. So I'd really like to um, take these values and convert them back into energy's intensity so that I can more easily compare uh, apples to apples. Uh, so in order to do that, we have another uh, uh, data processing component. Uh, not all too different from mass arithmetic operation in that it's under the analyze uh, data tab here. But uh, it's just called, let me see. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's not under the analyze data tab. It's under the extra tab. And here we go. It's called LB area normalize. Um, so sorry about that. It's in a different location. But what this would allow me to do is I can just take these data collections that I have here and automatically divide them by a unit area. Uh, and that will, you know, allow me to, I can then get data that I can plug into this that'll be energy use intensity rather than just the sum of all the kilowatt hours. So, all right, let me take this data right here. I'm just going to hold down control and shift uh, in order to be able to move all these, uh, in, you know, things that I connected up here. I'm just going to move them over to the area normalized component. Uh, and then I need the actual unit area. And that is something I can actually get from my little uh, end use intensity component down here, I actually have the gross floor area coming out of this component. So let me go and connect this up to here. And I know that's going to be in meters uh, by default, which I think is actually the default unit assumed here, right? Yeah, square meters, uh, right? Because because if I had set this to IP, that would have been in square feet. Uh, but, you know, in this case, I'll just keep everything in, a, in SI. And now these normalized data collections, when I connect them back to my monthly chart, uh, 
yeah, at least, okay, this will be, this is a little uh, easier to understand uh, in terms of what it means, right? Uh, 30, 35 kilowatt hours per square meter. I have a little bit of an intuition about how much energy that actually is. Um, and, you know, of course, there are, are many other things that we can customize with this visualization using the ladybug legend parameters. You know, if let's say uh, I'd rather the top of the legend be, you know, I don't know, 36 instead of uh, the, the random decimal point number there uh, that's used by default. I can just connect that up there. You know, I can connect, uh, maybe the, I only need one decimal place. Uh, maybe I also, uh, where is it, number of decimals. Maybe I want to change the colors, right? It's a little weird that we're representing heating with a light blue. Uh, so I can just bring up some color swatches. Uh, and let's say, you know, maybe heating is red, uh, but cooling is still, uh, let me see, is a blue color. Uh, you know, certainly you can customize this. Uh, any way you want. Uh, lighting could be a yellow. <laughs> I mean, I've got a lot of terms here, so maybe I'll just fast forward this quickly uh, just so you guys can see, but I think you get the idea. Okay, so yeah, so you can see, right, we can we can change our colors uh, to what something that we'd like. Maybe this is better as like a dark, yeah, there we go, hot water intensity, that's easier to see, right? So we can, we can easily, actually, <laughs> A little too saturated for me. Anyway, I'm getting, uh, I'm putting on my graphic design hat, which is really not the point of this video. But in any case, right, you can see that we can actually make uh, plots and visualizations. We can understand that if we really want to improve the energy efficiency of this district, probably focusing on something that minimizes this heating, maybe maybe some heat recovery of some kind, uh, or uh, or maybe some better insulation, right? Uh, right, we can already uh, get a sense of uh, like what the breakdown is, what the what the kind of biggest end uses are for this district. Right. Um, so, all right. So with that, you guys get a sense of how you can process this, uh, these outputs from your simulation, right? How you can get, uh, you know, the energy use, even though it's, you have a list of SQL files in a big district instead of just a single building. Uh, so I hope you guys found this helpful. This is good, kind of the, the end, the end milestone that we've been working towards of just visualizing some of the, uh, the energy results out of a, out of a simple district. In the next videos, we're going to kind of put this file to the side for, for a while. We're, we will come back to it because I'm going to use this, this example file we've built uh, to demonstrate some of the other capabilities of the Urbanoft SDK to you. But I want, before we get there, I want to show you a couple other ways that you can build Dragonfly models. We aren't going to simulate them like the way that we did here, uh, but I want you guys to be aware of them because they're, they're very useful, especially in the later stages of design or when you're not working through uh, a data set of footprints, building footprints. So thank you for, for joining us all through this long journey, this uh, fairly large grasshopper script that we've built all the way to the end here. Uh, and, uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.